Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to make some cheeseburgers and we're gonna make the meat from scratch. I've got a two and a half pound chuck roast that I'm also going to incorporate brisket trimmings or brisket fat in with. And we're gonna to try to do these burgers 80-20. And the nice folks over at Neutronic have sent me their 1300 watt electric grinder uh, that I'm gonna to use to do that. Um, I'm gonna do a little review on this thing as we go. Uh, but so far, right out of the box, it comes with everything you need. It's an electric grinder, so it just plugs right in. It's got a little auger that goes in here. We've got some different size dies. Coarse, I believe that's a 10 mil there. Medium, probably an eight. And fine, probably a three mil. Not sure about that, but coarse, medium, and fine. And then we've got some other attachments here. We've got a cheese grater, uh, another fine grater here. We've got a slicer, if you wanna do sliced vegetables, you just drop it in there and slice your vegetables with this. Got a nice little horn here if you want to do bratwurst or sausages. Uh, obviously the cover and the cutter for that. The food pusher, the plates. And then here is what you would use for these attachments for shredding and slicing and the food pusher for that. And then you've got this little biscuit maker. It's got four different settings. There's a six point star here and just some other shapes you can use. Uh, let's get all of our components in the freezer to get really, really cold because when you're grinding meat, you want it to stay as cold as possible for as long as possible. So we'll get these attachments in the freezer and then we'll start prepping our meat. All right, so for these burgers, we're just going to do a basic burger here. Instead of buying ground chuck from the store, right, you want to make these burgers homemade. You want to make them yourself. So I went and got a two and a half pound chuck roast. Uh, that's got some good marbling in it actually. So this is probably already about 5%, a little more than 5% fat content. I'm going to be adding brisket fat to this to make it 80-20. Um, this is two and a half pounds, so I'm just gonna consider this two and a half pounds of lean meat. I'm gonna add in a half pound of brisket fat trimmings to act as our 20%. So what I'm gonna do and remember, we want to get this meat and the fat as cold as possible when it's going through the meat grinder. So we're going to cube this up into little one inch cubes, put it on this sheet. We're going to do the same with the brisket fat. Then we're going to throw it in the freezer and let that get super cold, not frozen. You don't want it hard. You want it as close as possible to frozen. You want it really cold, but still able to put through the grinder and grind into uh, our burger meat. So we're just going to cut this up real small into cubes and get it in the freezer. Now whatever meat grinder you're using, that's how big you wanna make these chunks. If you have a smaller diameter um, where the food goes in on your meat grinder, just make them smaller. Um, you can do whole strips like this. If you have a really powerful meat grinder, you can just put them in like that. But I've got a smaller one and a smaller diameter, so I'm gonna make these into one inch cubes, and that's why I'm doing it that way. So just cut the meat to the size that you need for your grinder. Also, it helps if your meat is already really cold before you start cubing it up. It's cold meat is just way easier to trim, to cut, to dice, to slice. It just helps. All right, now that our chuck roast is all cut up and diced up, we're gonna do our brisket fat. I've got a little scale here that I'm gonna weigh this as I go. Remember, I want a half a pound of fat to two and a half pounds of lean meat, i.e. our chuck roast. It's okay if your brisket trimmings have a little bit of meat in them. We're still gonna put it in there because we're doing 80-20 burgers. So if it ends up being 85-15 or 90-10, I really don't care. That's still great, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna cut this up real small. All right, let's see where we're at with this. A little much, take a little bit out. We'll take this meaty piece out here. All right, we'll put some back. We're at six ounces, seven, seven and a half, eight ounces or half a pound. So that's perfect. We're gonna put this on the pan also with our chuck. Now I'm gonna spread this out on this pan here so it'll kind of chill and get cold evenly. And into the freezer it goes. I'd say about half an hour to 40 minutes until everything's nice and firm. You can check on it periodically too to see if it's 
getting close. You don't want it completely frozen. It, it's gonna be hard to pass through the grinder, but you want it really cold. You want it to stay as cold as possible for as long as possible. And the brisket trimmings we didn't use will go back in the freezer for a later date. So upon further review, all of our meat and fat totals up to just over three pounds, which is 48 ounces. And 15% of 48 is 7.2. We've got just over eight ounces of fat in this mixture, so our burgers are gonna be closer to 85-15 which is perfect, they're still gonna be juicy and delicious. So once everything cools down, we'll get to grinding. I'm really excited to use this grinder and see how it does. All right guys, after about 20 or 30 minutes, our stuff is nice and cold. Our meat is firm on the outside, but not frozen. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. So this attachment goes on first and then the little auger goes in here. The blade, you want the blade outwards towards the die. We're gonna go with our coarse blade here. Put that on there. It's all set up, good to go. Get this plate on the top. Here's our chuck roast and our brisket fat. There is some fat in here too still, so that's why I didn't go too heavy with that brisket fat. So. Uh, let's turn this on. Uh, just an on-off button back here and there's a reverse button. You hit the reverse button and it goes in reverse and you click the on-off button to go, to go forward. You can't go reverse while the on-off button is on. You just click on and it goes. So let's grind this stuff up and see how this grinder does. We ran into a little snag here. Not sure what happened there. I'll turn this back on. So okay, um, that actually did pretty good. Uh, it sounded like it was struggling at times. Um, but I think it's because the fat chunks I was putting in there, they felt a little harder than the rest of it. So those chunks I went through, I think, made it struggle a little bit. It is only a 1300 watt electric meat grinder. It's not an industrial size one. Um, it probably can't handle the bigger, more frozen chunks, but it did a pretty good job. I'm actually pretty happy with this. So we're gonna run this through again, uh, and then we're gonna season it, and then we're gonna make our burger patties. The reason why I'm gonna run it through twice is because it's kind of, you know, coarse ground. You just wanna do it twice so it's not uh, it doesn't really fall apart while we're cooking it. Pretty impressed with this thing so far. If you want to check this thing out, I'll put a link in the description um, for Amazon. Uh, that's how you have to buy them. That's how I bought it. So link in the description if you want to check this thing out. All right, so now I'm just gonna take handfuls of this and put it through again using the same size die, um, the coarse 10 mil grinder die. So let's turn this back on and do a second pass. And there we have it. That first pass was too crumbly, and if you tried to cook it on the griddle, it might just crumble and fall apart on end. You'd end up with just ground beef. Um, literally, this is ground beef, but you know what I mean. It wouldn't be a patty if you just ran it once through and then put it in a patty and put it on the griddle. It might just fall apart on you. So this will help let those enzymes and proteins be released and help keep the patty form stronger and more integrous. So now we're gonna season this and we're gonna start cooking them. For our seasoning for our ground beef, we're gonna use Cosmo's Cow Cover mixed with Killer Hogs AP seasoning. You can just do salt and pepper if you want to. You can use any seasonings you prefer that you enjoy more than these, but I really like these, so we're just gonna flavor them up with these seasonings. Kind of more of a barbecue theme going here. Um, even though we are gonna cook them on the Char Griller Flat Iron Premium Griddle today, 
I love using that thing. If you don't have a griddle at home and you're looking to get one, Char Griller has great ones. They have the premium griddle and they have another one. I'll put links for the description also below. So we'll just throw our ground meat in this pan here and we'll season it up. We'll throw a little more cow cover on top, a little more AP in there. And now obviously we're just gonna mix this all together to incorporate the goodness throughout our ground meat here. Mix it all together and doing this by hand will also help the emulsification process. Kind of kneading it like you know you're kneading bread. Work it all together. Get the meat nice and sticky with those enzymes and proteins. Fat content was looking good. Nice ratio. Looks more like 80-20 but according to my weights it's 85-15. And you can tell there's plenty of fat in here. So I have no doubt that these burgers are going to be juicy and delicious. Not dry out. They're not going to burn. It's a good fat to meat ratio. They say if you can take some meat and it sticks to your hand, the emulsification process is complete. Sticky hand test. Looks good to me. So now let's form these into perfectly sized patties. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Probably six ounce. Yeah, we'll do six ounce patties. I'll use my scale to weigh six ounces. And then we'll use our new fun little toy that I got that I've been also dying to use. And I will show you that here shortly. All right, this is the new toy I wanted to show you. It's a Weber Burger Press. Uh, I saw this on another YouTuber's channel, Chud's Barbecue. That's where I actually bought this. I clicked his link and bought one. I'll put a link in the description on this video also if you want to go get one. I'm excited to use this thing. Um, you can just weigh out any size patty you want to. We're going to use some parchment paper here. Put the meat on there and just, well, and then put parchment paper on top and press it and you'll have a perfectly portioned, perfectly made burger patty. So we will get our parchment paper there and we'll get our scale turned on. Try to do a six ounce, 6.0, perfect. Parchment paper on, meat on parchment paper, parchment paper on top, dirty glove off. All right, and you just undo it. <laughs> cool, little burger patty ready to go. Let's do a couple more of these. So, excellent. This thing's pretty cool. So once you get all your burgers pressed out, you can cook them right away, or you can put them in the freezer, and you can pull them out later whenever you want a burger. Just pull it out of the freezer, throw it on the griddle. So I'm gonna get the rest of these patted up, and then we'll start cooking. All right, we got one little four-ounce patty at the end there. I'm going to start throwing on these strips of bacon. I'm making the whole package of bacon because that's what I do when I make bacon. Some of this will be used for the burgers. The rest of it, I'm probably just going to eat. That's how I roll. This is what you get when you use that burger press. You can just take one side off, slap it on, boom. And that bacon grease will add flavor to your burgers. Get our last burger on there. Throw a little bit of mayonnaise on a bun, get the bun all toasted there. We're gonna get rid of some of this grease here. A little bit of mayo. 
are ready to pull off. All right, guys, let's see what we got here. We got our nice, delicious looking toasted bun. We're gonna get our patty over here with our melted American cheese. What's well, a burger without some stone ground mustard? I'm using Grey Poupon Dijon. All you food police out there, I'm using a utensil, don't worry. I'm not gonna stick my fingers in the jar. Get some pickles on there. So I love pickles on my burger. Mayo toasted bun, stone ground mustard, pickles. Man, that is looking delicious. Ooh, man, that is a juicy, greasy burger. That is looking delicious, guys. Juicy, soft, steamy goodness. That is melt in your mouth, juicy. Ah, oh, man, that's just, I think the brisket fat was a great idea for this. AP seasoning with cow cover was a great idea. It's got that barbecue flavor, stone ground mustard, mayo toasted bun, what more could you ask for? Melty American cheese. Of course, I forgot the bacon sitting right here in front of me and I forgot to put it on here. I'm just too excited to eat, you guys know that. Get some bacon on here. There we go, there's a bite with bacon in it. Oh, that is amazing. You can probably hear all the gross chewing noises. I don't care, it's just too good. So the meat grinder did a pretty good job. So that's it guys, that was a pretty good burger. The meat grinder worked pretty well. It did struggle a time or two, but I think it was because of the fat chunks that I froze got a lot harder than the meat did. So I think it kind of just choked up on that for a second. But other than that, it's a great beginner grinder. If you're gonna do stuff like this, burgers, you wanna try your hand at sausage or broths, like I said, I'll put a link for it in the description. The Char Griller Premium Griddle always delivers. I think it's awesome, I love using it. It's so versatile, you can cook pretty much anything on it. So yeah, uh, give this recipe a shot. Let me know what you think. You can use any seasonings you want. Like I said, we use the Killer Hogs AP and the Cosmos Q Cow Cover. Always good go-tos, those are just such great rubs. I'll put those in the link too, in the description if you wanna check those out. So that's it for this episode, guys. I appreciate you watching and hanging out. Give this recipe a try and let me know what you wanna see me cook. Hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Find me on Facebook, Instagram. Don't really use Twitter. And we'll see you next time.